Um, thank you. Well, um, well, th today I'm going to talk about the, uh, you know, the, my work. And, you know, um, I have developed uh, many well, robots so far, and, uh, and uh, I have exhibited uh, many robots the, in Arts Electronica and from uh, 2009. Um, so what I want to say here is, uh, you know, um, um, why I, I, I'm working in the robotics areas, you know, um, the, my purpose is to understand what is a human. So we are developing the technologies in, by including robotics for understanding humans. I, I think that this is the meaning, real meaning for the technology development. And, and this is the, also the constructive way for understanding the humans. Well, the neuroscience, the cognitive science, and they're taking the kind of, you know, um, the analytical way, but uh, you know, the robotics is a way um, to understand, uh, the, the, it's a constructive way for understanding the, uh, you know, the human itself. So the, that is why you know, I have developed, I keep, just keep developing the, the various robots from a very simple mechanical looking robot to the uh, you know, very complicated uh, human-like robots. And always the question is, is, you know, um, is, is about the human likeness and I, I studied about the human-like appearance and human-like movement and the human-like perceptions, right? And uh, you know, the conversations and human-like uh, uh, development are uh, the process. And these questions are, you know, the, the same time for the, uh, uh, the human itself, right? So we are sh sharing the, uh, these fundamental questions uh, between the robotics and the, well, the, the, the human sciences. I think that is a quite important thing, you know, quite important point. And let me, you know, the, the, uh, the show you the couple of uh, uh, the robots that I have developed so far with, with, with the fundamental questions. The first question was how much human likeness does the robot need to have, okay? Um, in, in order to study about that, right, you know, I have developed yeah, this, you know, the human-like, very human-like robot in 2004 and exhibited in a World Expo in Aichi. As you can see here, right, um, the robot, the, well, this robot has a very complicated uh, the inside mechanism and the, uh, uh, well, a very soft skin sensor, sensitive so, uh, skin sensors with the facial expressions. And this is not so bad, right? And recently, you know, the, I have developed the, uh, uh, a little bit more the sophisticated robot for uh, the, uh, the storytellers. You know, that this is, the, he is a very, uh, um, the famous uh, storyteller in Japan. You know, it's, it, it's kind of a, you know, comedy, uh, the, the, uh, it, it is not the uh, purely comedy, but in the traditional comedy. And he's a national treasure in Japan. Very, very important person, but he's getting old and he cannot play, uh, play the uh, storytelling anymore. Therefore, you know, the, uh, um, the, his family and the uh, sponsors, and we have discussed to, and, and, and uh, finally decided to, um, to, to make the, uh, his android. And, and you know, that we can, and, and everybody can enjoy the, his storytelling forever, right? So this is a kind of archiving. This is not digital archiving. It's a kind of, you know, hybrid archiving, I guess, right? And we are we also in, uh, they are using the Android for the, uh, the show windows, and this is the another in a very very practical way. Um, the, the, my question was, uh, what is the idea in the show windows? You know, the, usually we are, we are using the uh, mannequins. Mannequin is not idea, right? So the, uh, probably we want to see the more you know human-like robot there, right? But we cannot use the uh, the, the human, right? The, uh, um, many years ago in, in France, they have used the humans for the show, show windows. And actually, it was very, um, that they are very uh, beautiful, the human model, um, but uh, it was not so good, right? And the human cannot stay in, in a window so long, right? And then, you know, the, I, I, you know my idea was to use the, uh, uh, my very human-like Android. And this is not, you know, the, uh, the static Android like a mannequin. And we have used the uh, sensors, and this Android has a kind of, uh, you know, intelligence. Right? Of course, in Android, it does not need to talk because of the window, right? So that is a very important thing, right? So the most important, uh, difficult things for the artificial intelligence is the voice recognition and, uh, you know, um, the, uh, well, the conversation. Conversation is quite, quite difficult, uh, almost impossible, you know, to have a very natural human-like conversation in, in, in the natural situations. But here, you know, Android could have uh, uh, the human-like intelligence. So if we can choose the situation and the purpose, then Android will be uh, the humans. And then there were, we did something more in, in Hong Kong after the, uh, uh, the uh, show window activities in, in Japan. 
And here we don't have a window anymore, right? But uh, you know, the, the, we had the Android, uh, the distance between Android and audience was a little bit longer, so that you know they, they didn't have. Well, I mean, audience they didn't have the motivation to talk, to interact with Android. But uh, but you know, the audience just uh, they listen the Android talks and and Android was uh, taking uh, some reactions um, to the uh, audience behaviors, right? And, and Android was uh, singing a song, and you know, the exp uh, exp was explaining the uh, um, the uh, show, uh, show window, uh, sorry, the uh, shopping mall. That so this was the, uh, also the, uh, you know quite human-like and intelligent. So um, the, so um, and, and in the near future, I think uh, you know we're gonna use more Android and more you know human-like robots uh, in a particular situations, and I'm very sure about that, right? And uh, you know, and then you know we're gonna improve the uh, the artificial intelligence for the Android more and more. And someday, you know, the Android may be more interactive, but uh, now, you know, it's quite difficult to have uh, to give uh, um, the uh, the human-like conversational ability to the Android. Therefore, you know, the, I have uh, you know developed the uh, uh, terabyte Android and exhibited here in 2009. So this is the uh, you know the my uh, the Android, and I, I I'm operating this Android. How, you know. The, the important thing is, uh, you know, if uh, if we use uh, this Android, and if, um, if we have uh, some uh, conversations, for, for example, the five minutes, you know, the both the visitor and the operator can adapt to this the Android, you know, quickly, and uh, actually, you know, the uh, um, the uh, the visitor, the, the uh, well, they could accept this Android as myself, and uh, you know, the operators, you know, well, they could accept this Android body as his or her own body. I guess you know some of you have uh, you know, experienced the, well, with this the Android you know, in uh, 2009, and 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 the one thing that I, I want to mention here is that I'm not you know the best operator for this Android. Actually, you know I, I you know and the human the, we don't know the ourselves. You know we don't know the, our face and behavior, voice and the behaviors. You know, we we don't have a perfect knowledge about ourselves. Therefore, you know the, the, it's easy to the, adapt to the different Android that has a synchronized movement. Okay, actually here, you know, um, the computer is tracking the face, and uh, you know, computer is well, um, the monitoring the voice and converting the that the voice into the lip movement and, and tracking the face and, and transmitting the uh, motion parameter to the Android. And if, uh, you know, the operator moves ahead and uh, the Android head also moving, right? The, the, so therefore, you know, it's easy to adapt to the, this, the, uh, you know, uh, the, um, the Android body, right? So the operator can easily adapt to this Android body. And, and the, what's happened here, right? And actually, so the, um, what's the meaning of adaptation? Adaptation means, uh, the operator can accept this, you know, the the Android body as his own body or her body, right? So, and um, this is a quite, you know, someone is pushing the cheeks of the Android, and, but uh, you know that this is the quite annoying, right? <laughs> uh, well, the, but uh, you know, the, however, the, the interesting thing is that you know the operator can have a very strong virtual feeling to be touched, okay? So th there is no sensory feedback. Right. So the operator is just watching two monitors and talking. But still, you know, the operator can have a very strong budget of wing to be touched. That means, you know, the operator can exist in a distant place by using this one, okay? Therefore, you know, what I did is uh, an experiment in a Cubus, right? And the, this, the Cubus is the, uh, the, 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 the cafe in the third floor of uh, the Arts Electronica, and we put the, uh, this Android in a cafe, right? And uh, three weeks, and we checked the reaction of people. And before that, you know, the, um, what we did is, uh, uh, sorry, the before coming to the Arus Electronica, the, um, you know, just after building the robot, I, I used this robot for and this Android for my lectures and meetings, and uh, we didn't have any problem. It was quite, you know, uh, was natural, right? Um, and but you know, the problem was, you know, I, the um, this uh, I have developed this robot Android in a research institute, and and in the called the ATR. Um, the ATR said, you know, they, they, they cannot pay for me. Right? They cannot pay the, my salary you know, if I use uh, this Android. Right? It's, it's quite strange, right? You know, my, my appearance and movement and talking, everything's there, right? So, so same as uh, this situation, okay? But, you know, of, co of course, you know, the, well, you know, the Android does not have a brain and a stomach, but you know, nobody checks so far, right? <laughs> 
Just to today, that this is the same things, right? You know, did you check the, uh, what I am? <laughs> so nobody knows, you know. So you are just sitting, right? You may be Android, right? It's easy to replace you with Android, right? Because you are just sitting and, and laughing, right? <laughs> it's quite easy. Right? So anyway, um, so that is, that is a very important thing, okay? You know, um, and the, the, we, we are living in a very technological uh, information and the technology the societies, right? You, you're using many devices, electric devices, but the most fundamental stuff is, uh, you know, we are just, each, uh, just you know, believe the, each other that we are human, okay? Without any, you know, verification, right? So that is a human society. And, you know, this is a theme from the, uh, uh, the Arthur Electronica, that we had a conference, and, you know, the, uh, we had the experiments in, in, in Cubus, right? And half of them, you know, the half of, uh, the, we got so many visitors, but, you know, the half of the visitors uh, couldn't become aware of what is this, right? You know, just probably they saw just, uh, you know, there's some strange Japanese thing over there, you know, it is not, it is better not to go there, right? Um, but, you know, the, the, the half of the people, the visitors, uh, and, um, and they have found that something wrong, and, and they came to check it, right? But once we started to talk, right, we didn't have any problem, right? I, I could have many friends by using this Android. And now, you know, the, you know, the, many, uh, the three of us, uh, you know, have uh, an own copy, right? <laughs> okay, so, and what we did is, uh, you know, we just put the uh, three Android in the same room, and, uh, you know, we operated the, uh, well, the, this Android from a distant place, right? And we didn't have any problem. You know, this was uh, quite natural, right? So that, you know, definitely we're gonna use the, uh, this kind of a teleoperated Android in the near future. But well, in my case, you know, I'm gonna use, I'm very busy, you know. When I, uh, you know, I, I have many, you know, invited talk and I, I, I need to travel always, right? And then, you know, I, I, I but, but uh, you know, I can use uh, this Android for my lectures in, in a university, <laughs> okay? And if I get old and if I need to stay in a hospital, definitely I'm gonna use uh, this Android, right? So I can survive in the university forever, right? So the, I strongly recommend, you know, you should develop the, you know, you, you should have a, the, a, the own Android, your Android, right? So the price is about uh, 100,000 uh, euros, and it is the you know, same as, uh, maybe the cheaper than Porsche, right? Don't buy the Porsche, okay? <laughs> buy this one, right? Then, you know, the, you can have a perfect, a perfect, perfect safety, right? And then what I tried to do was, uh, you know, the last year I came here with the Android theaters. The purpose was, um, of the Android theater is to have a perfect Android with the, uh, you know, the perfect, uh, very human-like appearance and beautiful face and beautiful, you know, uh, smiling face and, and angry face. And, you know, this is Android. This is the result of our technology. So therefore, you know, we can, we, we can gather, you know, the best parts, right? Best appearance, best, best movement, and the best talking. Right, you not to be given the best of talking, right? And so, and I, I prepared the, you know, I, we have developed the uh, uh, Android theaters, right? So, um, I, I, again, I, I guess that some of you, you know, have watched this, the Android theaters in a cathedral, right? And this was uh, so good, right? And, uh, and after this, we got a very good reputation in uh, Europe, and uh, we are traveling the uh, Europe with Android theaters, um, and this was uh, so beautiful. But the uh, problem was, uh, you know. Uh, and, and, well, and, and we have played this Android theater in a cathedral, right? It's just over there, right? And um, problem was, uh, you know, that many people, they say that this is uh, so beautiful. You know, it's a, a kind of a perfect human. Therefore, no, this is not so human-like. The human is more complicated, right? Human is not so perfect like this Android. Then, and this Android looks like a Mario, right? And, and then I have changed my mind again, right? And I, 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 at that time, you know, I, um, well, I started to think deeply about the, uh, the what is the, you know, the human likeness again. And um, anyway, so the lesson from the uh, Android theater is that the perfect Android or human is not so human-like. And, 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 and again, the question is what is the, uh, you know, the more human-like is, you know, the probably human interact with others by using imagination. Human, -like, human is so, so, you know, so complicated. You know, just one picture cannot represent that person, okay? So, and, and we recognize the persons, um, um, you know, um, by what, of course, by watching the face, but by uh, they're watching the movement, and the, you know, the, the snare and the voice, and, uh, well, there's so, so many factors, right? The human is so complicated. And uh, roughly speaking, we can say, you know, we have imagination about the person, right? Then, so I thought, 
you know, if we um, prepare a kind of a imagination maximizer, you know, probably that will be a more human-like. So the minimal, so that is a minimal design of a human, you know. And actually, so this is the uh, minimal design of a human, I believe, right? You know, so through the uh, many experiments with the android, with a very human-like robot, finally I got uh, these ideas, right? And and I thought, uh, you know, that this the minimal design the maximizes uh, imag our imaginations. And actually, the, this one works very well. And, and uh, you know, the, 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 this is the same as a Geminoid or Terraplated Android, but the difference is uh, in appearance of this robot, right? The voice, but the voice is coming from here, right? But once we hear the voice uh, from the, this, uh, this robot, you know, the usually and we, have a, we can have an imagination about the speakers from the voice, right? Then when we are talking with someone, um, by using a telephone, right? That we can have an imagination of the persons, and then we can mentally project the, the, that imagination onto this neutral face. Therefore, you know the, you know the, uh, the well, especially for the elderly, elderly love to talk with this android, the, this robot, not android. That this is just a robot, right? But you know, the everybody, right? There's no exception. And the, and, the, and the elderly likes to talk with the people um, and the best on their own imagination, right? They, 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 they don't like to talk to the real human, right? But uh, you know, they love to talk with this, you know, the, uh, the android. So no exception, right? The pro, you know, the, um, the, we have started the, uh, a big project in Denmark. Denmark is a very famous country uh, with a very good welfare system and, uh, you know, um, um, and, 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 and in Denmark and in local areas, uh, the elders are living alone. And, and you know, the volunteers and the medical doctors, you know, they are visiting the, uh, their houses, but uh, you know, they, they, they don't have enough the, uh, people you know, for doing that, right? And, but, uh, but telephone does not work. No. The, we, if we uh, make a telephone call to the elders, they feel the very strong loneliness, okay? But uh, you know, and they don't feel any the loneliness with this one because they can feel the presence of the person, right? The, and the, the, this, this one brings a very strong presence. Okay. So, and now, you know, the, uh, um, and the, we are exhibiting uh, this robot in, in Alice Electronica. Please go, uh, you know, go to the Alice Electronica Center and uh, please try to use it. And, and we are also the, uh, exhibiting the uh, more minimal <laughs> the stuff, the, that is the hardware. The most important feature of this, you know, the terenoid, this robot is, you know, actually this is a huggable, right? And, 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 you know, the, the we can hear the voice from the robot. So t two important factors. You know, one is the uh, tactile sensation, the other is the, you know, voice, right? And, you know, the, if we pick up just uh, two important factors, we can have uh, this kind of very simple robot. It's Hagby, right? This is the uh, kind of, uh, you know, um, the, you know, this is the smartphone, right? You know, please try to use the Hagby. And Hagby also, uh, they are available in the Arts Electronic Centers. And uh, you know, the, the, well, during this festival, the, we are uh, the exhibiting the, uh, uh, the, the more advanced hugby with the uh, vibrations. You know, actually, the, we, have, uh, we have developed the technologies that uh, you know, they simulate the heartbeat from the, the, the voice, right? So, and, and you can feel the, uh, you know, the heartbeat of the speakers, right? So this is a very, very good, right? <laughs> you know. Now, if you they, uh, give a hug to this robot, you know, you do, usually you don't see the uh, face, right? Therefore, you know, we don't need to have this kind of a human-like face, right? So this is enough, right? <laughs> anyway, and the, the, uh, the, the most important challenge in the, in the current, the, in my work, uh, is, is to, to develop the uh, uh, a mobile phone, okay? So now you are using uh, this mobile phone, smartphones, iPhones. What, what is the meaning of this, okay? So this is uh, just a small computers. No progress for the talking functions, okay? So if we want to have uh, some you know, the progress in the talking functions, we need to do something more, right? So this one, they transmit our voice to the distant place. But if we give uh, you know, this appearance, this shape to the, eye, uh, the mobile phone, you know, then we can transmit our presence also, right? If we hear the voice from here, we can feel the presence of the person, right? So that is, I think, a real innovation. Now people are talking to this black box, okay? You know, because uh, this one has the voice recognition, well, it's okay, but uh, you know, it's quite strange to talk to the black box. You know, I guess you are crazy, right? <laughs> you know, if uh, your you know, children is talking to this, uh, are to talking to this black box, you know, I, I, I recommend you, you take the children to the hospital, right? But uh, this is more natural. You know, we have a brain to talk with the people, right? So, in the near future, we're gonna have, uh, you know, 
and this kind of uh, right and the, uh, the uh, mobile phone. So this is our feature, right? And we have already we have already developed the prototype, right? And, uh, and almost ready, okay? And this is another version, right? <laughs> Well, anyway, so I don't have uh, enough time to talk about this. Anyway, so the, uh, someday, uh, uh, the, my concern is that someday is the boundary between the human and the machine disappears, and uh, what is the definition of humans? We are always looking for the uh, definition of humans by developing new technologies, and, and, and you know, uh, the, we are sharing the, and the, uh, these questions among the various research areas, you know, neuroscience, cognitive science, robotics, everybody sharing, the, and artists, you know, they're sharing uh, these questions. So my answer is that probably we be, you know, um, this is, uh, 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 you know, this is my hypothesis. We believe each other that we have a heart and mind, and we believe each other that we are, we are humans. This is the most important principle, and I want to verify uh, this my hypothesis by developing the uh, robots that works in your daily, uh, your future, uh, the societies. So that is my approach. Thank you very much. Okay, so on the schedule, you saw that there's a discussion scheduled afterwards, but I think it makes more sense for these two talks to have questions directly to the speaker at the end of their presentation. So I would like to invite you to ask questions now to Professor Ishiguro. Yeah, I remember Fukushima. And I was wondering why there are uh, no robots in a country which is, uh, has the leading technology in robots. So my question is, uh, do you think you could replace all the humans in Fukushima which are still working there with your robots? Sorry, I, I can't get the clear here, but, but are you are talk, uh, the, asking that some possibility to use uh, this kind of robot technology for the uh, disaster, you know, nuclear disaster by nuclear plant, is that right? Okay, all right. Um, well, actually, you know, the, um, um, and the, 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 well, you know the, they need to have a two, two types of, uh, you know, the, uh, um, the support the, the by, uh, from the robot technologies. One is a physical support. You know the physical stuff like uh, you know the, the well, access to the uh, uh, nuclear plant and, and doing something in a nu nuclear plant, um, but um, um, but unfortunately, in a robot, uh, the Japanese robots, uh, I'm very sure, you know, that we uh, we have the best technology, robot uh, robotics technology in Japan, uh, well, um, the best in the world. I'm very sure about that. But still, you know, the, the, the we we can, you know, that um, our problem is that we don't have a military, right? Therefore, you know, we, we, we couldn't prepare for that kind of a disaster, right? But it's impossible to prepare for the disaster. But if we have a military, you know, military has the same situation. So therefore, you know, that we, we are using the American robots, right? And robots de uh, the, uh, developed by iRobots. So that is why, right? The 10 years ago, and, and, the, and we have developed the, the uh, robots that works in a nuclear plant. But you know the electric companies that they didn't like to use that because that means you know electric uh, the power, uh, sorry the nuclear power plant is, is not safe right yeah. it's not perfectly safe right if you know they prepare for the robots right but the another use of the uh, this kind of a technology is to bridge the people between the uh, the Fukushima areas and the Kobe the areas I mean you know the, we we had another big disaster in Kobe. I forget the when it was, maybe the 20 years ago or something, right? And they, they, they have experience, right? And if we bridge the, uh, the Kobe people, um, uh, between the Kobe people and the Fukushima people, right, they, they can have some suggestions, they can, have, they can talk with the Fukushima people and, uh, you know, they can do something mentally, okay? So I think, uh, you know, the, um, so this kind of uh, the robots, Right, so this is the, the, uh, the uh, kind of a new media, and this one, the purpose of this robot is to bridge the people uh, the, uh, through the internet. And, 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 you know, and, and we, we, are, well, the, we are planning to use the, uh, this robot in the Fukushima areas. And, uh, but still, we are working, working on that, right? So, but, but I think that you know, this robot can, can, can bridge the people, and, and then you know, that we can mentally the, 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 the help, uh, assist, you know. That, that, that kind of people, that they're getting in trouble. There was another question here.
Um, I really think it's pretty cool what you do. And I was wondering now when you're um, working on this telephone robot, what's the next step? What do you want to do when you finish it? Do you already have like some kind of, some kind of vision, like a, I don't know, like a computer in a human form or I don't know? Right. Well, I, I'm always looking for, you know, um, so uh, obviously the, my purpose is not to develop the human, just uh, you know the very human-like robot. Android is not my final goal. Uh, my final goal, uh, my goal is so probably you know so, uh, uh, um, uh, in a particular situation so this is much better, right? And probably you know that we can have uh, different types of a robot, and and the human is so complicated. The human is so uh, situated, right? According to the situations, we we can see the different humanities, and then we can we want to have a different robots. Right? Thus, well, in particular situations, probably the Android is, is, is the best. But in, 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 in the, for the elderly care, probably the, this design is much better. But for, and, and then, you know, the, if we choose the defined situation, we, we may have, uh, you know, the, the other types of robots. And what we are doing uh, now is, uh, you know, we try to minimize more and more. So I want to represent the human like life. You know, nobody knows what is a life, what is a soul, right? But uh, you know, I have some hypothesis about that, right? And I, I, I'm trying to develop that kind of a robot, right? So that, you know, that, that, this, that robot is just a way uh, to represent some idea, some conceptual stuff, right? The ones, but once we got that kind of you know, um, the uh, physical stuff, right? You know, we may understand something, right? So, so next ch the step is, is to minimize more and uh, to get get in deeper aspect of humans. And I, I'm not sure, you know. Well, what, what kind of results we can get, but uh, maybe uh, another six months or, you know, I, I, I want to show something. <laughs> another question over there. Thank you very much for these uh, wonderful explanations. I just wonder uh, in which way you consider cultural differentiations between people uh, in order to um, create a, a better uh, communication partner? Well, I know the so so um, we we the, especially for this one um, and the pteranoid, you know, we did uh, many experiments in the in the world. Uh, that we did the experiment in Japan and Australia and uh, Denmark and some and in the U.S. You know, but we didn't see the any you know the cultural difference. The culture and the stuff is a kind of a result of education, but uh, you know for the elderly care is is more innate. Okay. Other, you know, just uh, the uh, well, um, uh, well, and the nature of a human. I think uh, you know, the, 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 the we don't have any difference. We are just human, okay? And and the, the cultural stuff, and the, the the culture is is more advanced. The the more the uh, the well, in order to understand the culture, well, accept the culture. I think uh, you know, we need to have uh, some sort of higher education, or you know, the uh, we need. To have a more uh, the, the complicated the, the mind and and but uh, and in not well in order to provide the very very basic service for the communications we don't see any difference and uh, I'm very sure you know the, the Denmark and now we are running the, uh, the field test in uh, Denmark and the Denmark the uh, they love to use this robot and, and the same as the Japanese okay once we develop the service model in uh, Denmark then we can import the you know Danish the service model into Japan. Right, and, and and the same thing happened for the other in the countries. So, so that is my understanding so far. There's a question over there on the right hand side, or the left hand side. Hi, um, I find it really interesting that a lot of your work seems to fall within the uncanny valley of. Um, you know, things appearing almost human, but not quite in a way that's often very disconcerting. And uh, because so much of your work is focused on um, creating uh, better connections between humans by using robot intermediaries, do you find the Uncanny Valley to be uh, of great challenge? Um, you know, um, um, well, I, I think that, you know, the Uncanny Valley is, uh, you know, everybody think you know uncanny valley is uh, the very the uh, serious matter for the robot. But uh, I I don't think so. Well, you know, 
I started my Android project with my daughter's copy. At that time, you know, I didn't have enough money, so that uh, you know, the, my daughter, the Android has a very human-like appearance, but a very uh, you know, robot-like, jerky movement. You know, and and it, it was like a zombie or you know, moving corpse, right? And it was uh, so uncanny. But after that, you know, we have improved the, uh, you know, we have implemented a more human-like movement. And as you have seen today's the videos, you know, the robot, uh, the, the, for example, the female android, you know, it, it, it is not uncanny anymore, okay? And, and the, the more important thing is, uh, you know, the, if we spend uh, the, well, um, the longer time, I mean, if we spend uh, well, one day or one week with uncanny robot, you know, well, it will be very familiar, okay? We can adapt to that uncanny robot also. You know, the, the we have, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, uncanniness is, 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 is it's quite in the innate and important ability for humans, but uh, hum of course, humans need to distinguish the human and others, okay? So that is why we have, uh, you know, the uncanny bodies. And, but, uh, you know, the, on the other hand, we can adapt to that uncanny body, right? We did uh, some experiment, you know, the, with the different ages. Okay. The most sensitive age is uh, maybe around four years, three years old and four years old. And, but after that, you know, well, for, well, for example, the elderly, the 90 years old, they do not have a so strong, you know, the strong uncanny bodies for the robots. And, you know, you know, we, you know, we, we're going to accept more and more uncanny stuff because you know, by sharing some experience. Okay. So that is uh, my understanding about uncanny bodies. 